Ya antes de la primavera árabe, se había ido produciendo cierta revolución artística en países del norte de África y Oriente Medio, que habían empezado a realizar importantes inversiones en bienales, museos y ferias de arte contemporáneo. Con motivo del segundo aniversario del estallido de la primavera árabe en el Cairo, Metrópolis emite un documental grabado en circunstancias todavía complicadas, un año después de los acontecimientos. En Please Revolution, artistas visuales y de otras disciplinas ofrecen sus recuentos personales de lo ocurrido en la Plaza Tajir en enero y febrero de 2011, formando en su conjunto el retrato de una sociedad en erupción, de mujeres emancipadas y activas, y de una escena artística en ebullición. conditions were so bad and uh, especially to our generation um, we felt like there's no hope um, there's no hope in uh, not only in your career uh, there's no hope in living um, um, a human life. Uh, there's no open people. Uh, so you just lost your um, belief. And um, I took uh, this um, uh, bullets and small bullets. So uh, I had uh, like. Uh, 25 of them. Pellets. Yeah. Pellets. Yeah, they are, used for, they are used for hunting. Yeah. You may be... Yeah, killed. Like in any time. In any place. Because there's no guarantee on anything. And you, you're seeing people dying from, uh, uh, killed from snipers. <laughs> The revolution days, and this is what I felt, and and even from a talk from many friends around us, around us, at least we found each other again. Like in the beginning, everyone was saying this thing inside themselves and living their own life. But during the revolution day, like we found each other, and we found that we are connected in a way, and we can do something, and and like a very positive energy started to grow. 
I wasn't afraid in, 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 in the opposite. I felt that I have many friends and people that I know there. And I was thinking one of the things that I was always thinking how later when I will have children, how I will say to my children, no, I couldn't go to, to my revolution because I was staying on, at home watching TV, TV. So it was actually, I couldn't. I felt that I have to go. احنا بنات الفجالة للي نجيب ولا سيالة بيموتوا فينا الرجالة والدلع يا رشيدي <laughs> the people in the, in, the, in the Tahrir, when they when they left, when the, when the army uh, and the police entered the Tahrir, we skipped because they were shooting us. Then we collect ourselves in Talat Harb, which is very close square, and then we enter Tahrir again. So they they fear, they scared, they run, they run from people. They have nothing. Just like, 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 as you see me, some stones, and they have the power, they have the guns, they have the uh, Kalashnikov, or they run and they have this, and they run from us, they have stakes to beat us, but they run, they, the soldiers, they run. I know what. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, that was amazing. It means, as we were saying, power in the people, not in the Kalashnikov or in the stakes. Or... <laughs> On the 25th, we, we, we didn't know much what's gonna happen. So just we, my friends and me went together and we were trying to, to just be, to calm down and, and to think that nothing bad is going to happen. And uh, after this, also uh, in the 28th, all the Egyptians uh, knew that it's, it's dangerous, but they all went to the street in this day. So that's how the revolution succeeded. Oh, just this day succeeded. It's, the revolution is not in yet, of course. It's, there is nothing 100% safe in, in, the, in your whole life. You can die at any moment, uh, at any place. So it's, uh, going to, to the revolution is, isn't more dangerous than crossing the street. It's, you can die in both. <laughs> A little bit, you, when you start, you get afraid, but later on, when you see a lot of blood, a lot of people killed, and you, maybe uh, you have some friends get hurt, and you see a lot of people die, people die, later on you uh, lose that fear uh, by, by time. That's why you can find people in the front lines, they are not afraid, they are running <laughs> to take the pumps and throw it again. How, how it happens? After 10 days of killing and dying, later on you find that all people you love, they are disappeared. So why you are here? <laughs> and when that moment happened and people realized that they could actually, that they have the, the power to change, then everyone just automatically believed it's almost like instinct we have it's a human instinct we just all of a sudden realized we can do this we can change this it's not it's not a fact and we did and uh, i think it was inspirational for other places it's not to try and say we're inspired but it, it does because it's almost like art that's the whole thing this is art i think art is uh, is the strongest gun ever can be Art means writing, painting, poeting, uh, everything. Dancing, filming. Art is a gun. Not the gun, it's a gun. Because it's... Uh, okay, if you kill me, kill me. But uh, my, my work will stay, you know? There's many people, they died, but they stay. They stay. They're still here, you know. They didn't die, and this is a, this is a, this is this is a test. This is a world test, you know, because it's a, it's a. You can't really, uh, you can't kill a body, but you can't kill a soul.
because you don't really can't catch it. Afraid that the military kill you? Uh, sure, I'm afraid. But uh, we have uh, no choices. <laughs> what is this? Uh, killers. 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 And they prevent us to come here. Every day. Stop, stop. I'll give you the truth. I'll give you honesty so long as you give me asylum in Spain. <laughs> the pictures were taken uh, in Tahrir Square mm -hmm. during the 18 days of the uh, uprising. Uh, it was a bit dangerous, but it's, that's the fun part, because what happens is dangerous, they scream at you, they tell you you're not allowed to, and then an interaction happens. You go to the soldier, say, oh please, he tells you I'm a, you're a spy, and I say I'm not, then he tells you why you have a big camera, and I say, so there's always a play. Uh, I found it that yes, I could be a target for the snipers, uh, but at the beginning I didn't feel like I was a target for the snipers. Only since the end of December, uh, with the latest uh, army uh, attacks, that I was scared because they were standing right in front of everybody with their snipers on top of the buildings and uh, playing around with everybody. And people were just falling around. I mean, it was not a joke. And uh, I was extremely scared. <laughs> Art in itself is uh, an expression. It's a way of fighting back. It's a way of saying that we are saying not just as artists, but as audience and artists, that we're still alive and that we're moving on and that nothing is going to stop us. It's, it's, uh, I'm not talking about the content, but I'm talking about the action itself of going on and doing a play or doing a dance piece, even if we're not talking about the revolution, even if we're talking about uh, other topics because the revolution is not just about changing the system, it's about changing the minds and the culture uh, and uh, about changing how uh, your, our lives is. So um, an issue, the issue of uh, male dominance in, within the family is a revolutionary issue. Uh, the, the, like trying to dismantle the figure of the father within the family is a revolutionary issue. Uh, the, l talking about or looking at uh, a love relationship in a couple and the structure of power is a revolutionary issue. Yes, of course, it's um, what we get all the time from the West, which is the image of the women in Egypt and the Middle East who are repressed and who are held behind bars and don't have their rights and they cannot express themselves. And what I wanted to what I wanted to what I wanted to say to you was that well, it's not like that, and and we are here, and we can do our art and do our music, and it's just this image that uh, the West uses to for marketing and to sell, basically. But maybe if I point my finger at someone and I tell you that this is the bad guy, then you automatically understand that you are the good guy. So maybe they are saying, yes, those are the repressed women. Those are the women who are not free. So the women in the West automatically feel that they are liberated and they are free. And they are, they are, they are the ones who can truly be free. There's no reason to be surprised that Egyptian women or Muslim women are can be smart, can be articulate, can be intellectual, can be powerful. Women are oppressed all over the world. It's not about a particular culture. It's about patriarchy, which exists all over, all over the world. Men and women are extremely concerned with how women are dressed. We're concerned that Muslim women cover their hair, that Muslim women cover their faces, 
at the same time, we're concerned about what kind of dress Britney Spears wore to this party. Let women wear whatever they feel like wearing. Cover their faces or not wear anything at all. Like, it's, why is this a topic of such great concern? I've seen young women, veiled women, who are in the streets with us, 18, 20 years old, who I admired their courage when we were in a demonstration on the 28th because they were moving ahead, ahead of me, ahead of other men. I mean, I, you know, we're all afraid and we all went on, but they had that, also that. And, and that in itself is, is, is inspirational. It's great. And I think, again, we need to change the culture. There's a, there's a level of ignorance and there's a level of brainwashing that takes place not only here but also in the West. And that the media at the end of the day has constructed images that people have absorbed as being, um, as being definitive images. And the problem is true in both sides. A demonstrator holding a, um, a billboard in uh, Wisconsin saying, uh, Egypt, please help us. So, you know, on the same level, you have all of a sudden America that's been telling everybody and that's been um, um, feeding that idea that Arabs are terrorists. All of a sudden, it's asking, you know, you see American citizens asking for Egyptians to help them. So <laughs> أنا إمتى نسيتك إمتى أقرب مني لي Two Egyptian artists passed away during uh, uh, during the revolution. Like what happened? Uh, it's uh, Ahmed Basyuni and uh, um, uh, and Ziad Bakir. Uh, Ahmed Basyuni is an artist. He's a visual artist, and uh, and uh, he was there with his camera trying to document everything. Uh, he was praying with someone uh, in Tahrir Square. They were staying in Tahrir Square, so he was praying with someone. And then, when during prayer, uh, he uh, he he saw the men beside him like died from uh, uh, I think someone like Kanasa. They they shoot him. Sniper. Yeah. yeah, sniper. Yeah, exactly. So they shoot the one beside him. So he did. So that's why he 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 was running with his camera and he wanted to document this to to put it on the internet to to let him to let the other know what's happening but they didn't give him the chance so he was the second one that he and then with other more details uh, he he passed away me myself I, I lost two of my friends during the evolution and one and actually another one is a brother of a friend of mine as well and but the two uh, they were an artist ahmed basuni he was a he was a an artist a visual artist and uh, and uh, Sally Zahran also, she was uh, an artist, works with theater and uh, we just lost them. Uh, I want first to say the second, uh, second one, the second uh, Egyptian artist, his name is Ziad Bakir. And uh, Ziad Bakir is uh, uh, he is uh, he's a graphic designer of the Cairo Opera House. He is making all the the sign and and uh, his uh, his sister is a friend of mine. And she like before he passed away, she always said that he's like a very calm uh, person and he like all this kind of orchestra, symphony music, and uh, Enrico Macias and like all he's he's a very peaceful uh, uh, man and artist. He ran with with the other. Uh, uh, people to protect the Egyptian uh, music and then it's also the sniper <laughs> men who who, uh, he, uh, who killed them like uh, he, he had the shot from I mean from here and then it went out from there so it's it's, it's very hard the <laughs>
volatiles, the snipers can't soul, can't kill the soul. Ahmed Basuni, our colleague, he's an artist and he died, but we can't stop saying his name. You know, his name now is like, it's, it became more and more and more famous. You know, his son will be, yeah, and he's very proud of his father, and he is very proud of his father. You know, and his wife, and you know, you can't kill a soul. No. It's something you can't catch, but something really great and big. In the end, we are like, this is one of the things that uh, uh, we usually talk, and I think now it started to be clear for other uh, Egyptian community, that artist is not someone who is living uh, their own in their own purple <laughs> life uh, in the end we are human who are who are affected with all the things in the opposite we are like more sensitive to all the things that happen around us yes yes You're right It's not because we're, we don't go and throw stones, it means that we are not involved, we're not engaged. And luckily they listened to what I, what I said and we actually went on and, did the, and they did the rehearsals and we did the festival, uh, which like last week, the event had calmed down also so it helped. Uh, and it's true that the theater is surrounded by barbed wire and uh, walls and army and police, but just the fact of bringing the audience in across these barbed wire, you know, hundreds of people coming to see a work of art and to watch these young people, you know, say what they have to say is in itself a, a struggle, part of the struggle. It's, and it's as important. And this is something that we always have to remember, is that art also flourishes during war during all, all times of, of a society, arts always exists. Ahora vamos a trabajar. Que sepan que el camino es largo y no hay que luchar y no hay que parar. Para, así ya pueden conseguir la libertad. Y la libertad es en absoluta o absoluta que no hay. Pero el camino hacia la libertad es la libertad misma. El camino hacia la justicia es la justicia, el camino hacia la dignidad es la dignidad no hay camino, la dignidad no hay distancia ¿sabes? por eso, por ejemplo cuando veía a la mujer que la arrastraban en la plaza donde iba a buscar la libertad y la arrastraban ahí esto me impresionó mucho porque cuando en el sitio donde vas a pedir a buscar la libertad y te hacen eso Eso es un mensaje no solo a la mujer, pero a todos los hombres del pueblo. Que os cuidáis y no rebeláis contra nosotros. but we don't want to admit it. It doesn't work to have societies where 
people are starving while societies are extremely rich. It doesn't work that banks make loads of money and governments bail them out with poor people's money. It doesn't work. It, it, it's, it's unacceptable. It doesn't work that we are completely using all the world's resources now and discarding 50 years down the line where no water will, where regions won't have water, where fish will not going to be enough in the sea. We can't, we can't just not sink together on this. But it's, it's how people have to change inside themselves before that they want a change on the uh, politics uh, thing. And now hopefully many changes starting to be in our own life, but also we need to work on ourselves uh, more and our, um, uh, 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 our aim in our life. We don't get the option to vote for an uncompromised and uncorrupted candidate because the whole system is compromised and, comp and corrupted. So in, in how, can you, how can you be uncompromised and uncorrupted inside an, a compromised and corrupted system? And what we need now is to be inspired by the revolution as, a, as, a, as, a, as an intellectual concept into changing the rest of our lives. And I think it's the role of art and culture that does that. And, you know, we're ready, we're here. We, we, I mean, we've been through worse, so... <laughs> I don't like to talk about the revolution now. Any special reason? Any special reason? <sighs> There's so many people are talking, so maybe I, I just think that I want to listen. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> and uh, all people is afraid. There was the sound of chanting, the sound of the panic of the people, the running. And um, of course the bullets, I mean, different, different, uh, ooh, different ooh, guns. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ambulance <laughs> all the time, and um, the motor, the motorcycles were carrying the people, the injured people, from one side to another. There was also the sound of uh, wow, the occasional uh, then the call for prayer. That didn't, I mean, that was, I don't know. And there was uh, the sound, of silence, definitely, between the, the bullets, between the shooting. You could hear the silence very well because you were hearing something very loud at one point.